What's up, everybody? One more time, we want to say Karibu Sana to Harvest Conference 2020. These are the afternoon sessions, and we know that you are ready, and we want to let you know that we are ready for you. Today, we have none other than Miss Rebecca Dawn, all the way from Nairobi Lighthouse Church, and she is ready to be talking to us about the here and now. That's a focus on our gift mix and skill set at the local church and so many other beautiful things in there, and she is already amped and set to go. So all we're going to do is to invite you to invite as many people as you can because we are ready to get this started. Karibu sana. Thank you so much, Pastor Brian. I am so honored to be here. Harvest Conference. This has been awesome so far. I'm sure it's going to continue to be continue to be awesome. And I'm so blessed to be able to bring the word today, to encourage you all today. Anyone who's watching this, I truly believe God has a now word for you, those of you who are watching. And I pray that you're going to be so blessed, so encouraged, so stirred up. So today, I want to talk about focusing on the here and now. You know, one of the things that is so tempting to do, one of the things that I have found so tempting is to postpone dreams, visions, plans, ideas, uh, usefulness, service to the great big then, the great tomorrow. It's so tempting a lot of times for us as young people, did you notice I said us? us as young people, to postpone things to the next horizon. Like to say, okay, I'll do that when this happens, or I'll accomplish this when this comes to pass. And we peg our dreams, our skills, our usefulness on something in the distance, on something in the future. But how many of y'all know that God is a God of the here and now? You know, he's the God of yesterday, today, and forever. And so today I want to really just challenge us and encourage us about how to put our focus on the here and now. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes it's easy to say, okay, once I finish campus, I'll do this. Okay, once I graduate high school, I'll do this. Once I get a boyfriend or a girlfriend, mm -hmm, yes, I'll do this. Once I'm married, once I finish this job, once I get this uh, promotion, it's so easy to now start putting ourselves in that place of I'll do this when this happens, but I want y'all to be reminded today, God has something for you here and now. God has usefulness and purpose and identity and breakthrough for you in the here and now. You know, one of the biggest things that we're all so tempted to say is when Corona is over. When COVID is over, when this season is over, I'll do X, Y, Z. But y'all, God has something for us today. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. God is so big on today. The Bible says uh, in Lamentations that his mercy is new every morning. Mercy is doled out in 24 hour bunches. And I think it's because God is so committed to today, to this moment, to what we're doing right now. You know, I used to think when I was, especially right around the time I was in college, I used to think, man, when I get out of college, life will be easier. Uh, it'll be easier to volunteer. It'll be easier to go and do things. But the truth is, every season gets busier than the next. And one of the things we have to start developing is discipline, and none of us really likes that word, but it's the truth, discipline and the ability to know how to work in the season we're in right now, how to handle that season well. It's a foolish farmer that says, I'll plant in winter or I'll harvest in spring. It's about knowing the time and season you're in. What is your here and now? Think about it. What is your here and now? How would you define it? How would you define here and now for me is university. Here and now for me is a, a new, newly married person. Here and now for me is job hunting. Here and now for me is building an online business. Here and now for me is um, looking for which college I'm going to go to. What is your here and now? I pray that God gives us the wisdom to recognize the time and the season each of us is in. Because if you don't recognize your season, you will misuse your seed. Let me say that again. If you don't recognize your season, you will misuse your seed.
If you think, oh, it's winter time, let me go and uh, put uh, these seeds in the ground because I really want a great harvest. Those seeds that you put in the ground, they'll freeze, they'll die because it's not the right season. Or if now it's summertime and you start saying, oh, I'm just going to rest the ground. I'm just going to let it, you know, we have to recognize the season that we're in to make the best use of the seed that we have. And again, think about a farmer. When he plants, he's thinking in mind, when are the rains coming? When is the drought coming? Because what he's doing is giving his potential harvest the best possible chance that it has. So he has to recognize what is my here and my now? What tools do I have at my disposal right now? What's the weather like right now? How is the soil right now? All, he takes all those things in consideration, keeping in mind an incredible harvest that he wants to have. You know, when, I don't know about you guys, but when this whole coronavirus, COVID-19 season began, one of the things for me, let me just put myself out there. One of the things that this season has exposed in me is that my problem was never that I didn't have time. All those things I was postponing. Oh, when I get time, I'll do this. Oh, when I get time, I'll, I'll, I'll get that done. I've come to have to accept and admit my problem wasn't time. Because now, how, how much time have we all had and all those things we were going to get done? <laughs> What's happened to that list? My problem hasn't necessarily been time. My challenge has been recognizing the season that I'm in. And so this is what I want to share with us today. And I'm just going to share three very simple things about how to focus on your here and now. How to focus on using your giftings and your skills here and now. How to focus on connecting with your local church, connecting with the body and the family of believers here and now. If that means you're a young mother and you've got a two-year-old in your house and you're like, Lord, this season right now, my here and now is busy and I'm full of feedings and diapers. It's recognizing the time and the season that you're in and now saying, God, how can I best use the season I'm in now? If you're full-time in college, having to do a bunch of online classes right now, if you're starting a business, whatever is going on, it's for you to sit down and say, God, how do I best use my here and my now? How do I focus on this season and not keep putting my eyes on some distant horizon? You know, there's a story that Joyce Meyer told years ago, and it's never left me. I've always thought about it and remember it through different times in my life. She tells the story that she had a dream that she and her husband were holding hands and they were walking. And she was looking at what was on the horizon. And in her dream, what was on the horizon was what, it was something she wanted so much. Like, man, when I get there, I'm going to be so happy. When I get there, I'm going to be so fulfilled. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be so focused. When I get there, I'm going to be serious. And so in her dream, she and her husband are walking. They're walking. She's keeping that horizon in her view. She's keeping that horizon in her view. She's getting closer. She's getting closer. And it finally happens. They reach that horizon. And for a few minutes in her dream, she said she's so happy. Manze, I'm a fika. And she's reached. She's there. But then she said what happened is she was looking at her husband. And when she looked up, in front of her is a whole new horizon. And this is what uh, birthed in her, her book that's called Enjoying Where You're At, on the way to where you're going. We're all on a journey, y'all. All of us have dreams, visions, things that are, we're believing will happen in the future. But the problem is when we put all of our focus on the then, we can misuse the now. And listen to what I'm about to say. Your then is very dependent on your now. What's coming next? is very dependent on what you're choosing to do now. If, if, if you're expecting a harvest in the next harvest season, that's totally dependent on you putting seed in the soil now, watering it, weeding it, protecting it from too much sun, protecting it from too much rain, making sure it gets enough rain. So much of our next is dependent on our now. So I wanna share with us three things, three areas that I believe will help us focus on our here and now. Number one, to focus on your here and now, steward your time. Steward is a nice biblical spiri word. Steward your time. Steward simply means take care of. Be careful with. Steward your time. You know, how you spend your time shows what you truly value. 
If I was to look at your life or vice versa, if you were to look at my life, you could see what is really important to me based on where I spend my time, how I spend my time. Time is the one investment we make. We can never get it back. Once time is gone, it's gone. There's no, oh, I don't like how I spent that day. Let me do that day again. Oh, I really wasted this month. Let me do that month again. Time is irreplaceable. And how you spend your time tells you what you really value. And this is an important thing for us to notice. You know, when, when, uh, when this corona season started, some years back, I had bought a violin and I started learning. I could play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star and Mary Had a Little Lamb. Is that the same melody? Hiya. Anyway, I, I could play these tunes and then I kind of got busy and so I, I put the violin away. So when this whole season of staying at home, I, I told my husband, you wait, you wait, I come out of this season. I'm going to be know how to play that violin. I'm going to be practicing. I'm going to go back to lessons and I'm going to learn violin. <laughs> hey, wapi. Who has not had one violin lesson? Me. Because the reality is... Even though I might say that's an important thing to me, if you look at where I've spent my time, it, I'm proving it really isn't a value to me. It might be a great idea. It might be something that gets me excited in the moment. But if I truly valued it, if I truly valued it, I would have invested time in it. You know, for you to focus on the here and now, especially y'all, when it comes to our giftings, our abilities, our service, our connection, when it comes to all of those things, for us to really focus, we have to steward our time. I want to read a scripture here from Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. This is from the God's Word translation. And it says, whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly as though you were working for your real master and not merely for humans. This is what I want you to notice from the scripture. It says, whatever you do, do it. It doesn't say, whatever you do, plan it. It doesn't say, whatever you do, do it tomorrow. Do it next month. Do it when COVID is over. Do it when this season is finished. Do it when the season you're in is finished. It says, whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly. This, this verse is putting our focus on the here and now. Whatever you're doing, are you doing it wholeheartedly? If you're at home in this season, if you're still doing the stay at home thing, if you've just started working and you're in a brand new job, if you're looking for a job right now, are you doing that wholeheartedly? Or are you pegging your future harvest on actions that are not present in the moment? Oh, one day I'm gonna harvest avocados but you have, a, you have yet to plant an avocado seed. One day I'm gonna have a nice job, but you've only filled out one application that was denied and you haven't filled out anymore. One day I'm gonna serve in the house of God, but now you have time. Uh, let me just tell you, these are challenges that are being made to me as well, big time. Whatever you do, do it. Do it now. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it wholeheartedly. Do it with everything that you have in you value the here and now. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised to us. The moment that we have is now. Y'all, even with little things, when God puts it on your heart, maybe I should just call so-and-so, see how they're doing. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it when I'm not busy. I'll do it when I'm not busy. You know, I think about the story in the scripture, this, uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan. We all know this story. And this uh, man goes on his way and, and he's taken over by thieves and he's swooped a good one and he's thrown down in the ditch. And who passes him by? Two people pass him by before the Good Samaritan. And both of those people were religious people. Both of those people were ministers. But the Bible says that they were so busy. They were so focused on the then that they missed the here and now. They missed what God wanted them to do here and now. Here I have an opportunity to be a help. Here I have an opportunity to be a blessing. Here I have an opportunity to reach out a hand of healing to my neighbor in need. But these gentlemen were so focused on then. There's something I have to go do over there. There's a horizon over there that I'm passing by. Opportunities, I'm passing by. Things that God might have me to do because I'm so focused on the then that I am mismanaging my now. 
And that story always convicts me because I'm like, God, is that me? I want to think I'm the good Samaritan. I want to think me, I'm just walking the road. I see an opportunity, buddy, I'm ready to take that opportunity. But the truth is, y'all, God is still doing a work in my heart because so many times I notice the opportunities after they've passed. Because in the moment that it came, I was so focused on my then and my next that I mismanaged my now. What can you do now? Stop and think about it. What can I do right now? Okay, maybe it's evening. What can you do tomorrow? With that job that you want to get, be, let's be really practical. Write down a couple of things. I can make a phone call. I can fill out a, uh, work on my CV. Um, what else? What else can you do? I, I can organize that junk drawer. I said six months ago at the, start, at the start of COVID, I would organize. Like, how can you handle your now well? Steward your time. Take care of your time. Don't put so much emphasis on your next that your now suffers because your next is depending on your now. You know, I can stand here all day and tell you guys I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to lose weight. Monday, you guys, this is my year. I'm getting fit. I'm getting fit. It doesn't matter how much of a dream, how much of a vision, how much of a desire, how much of a hope I have until I actually start doing something now. Steward your now. Your next is depending on your now. Your next is resting on your now. Focus on your here and now. So the first one, steward your time. Number two, steward your gifts. Take care of your gifts. Let me read from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. It says, again in the God's Word translation, verse 5 says, this is Paul speaking to Timothy, and he says, I'm reminded of how sincere your faith is. That faith first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. I'm convinced that it also lives in you. Now listen to verse 6. You received a gift from God when I placed my hands on you to ordain you. Now I am reminding you, fan that gift into flames. To focus on the here and now, Steward your gifts. Take care of your gifts. Paul encourages Timothy, that gifting that you received, fan that gift into a flame. You know, God gives us a gift, but it's up to us to develop it. It's up to us to grow it. It's up to us to make something beautiful out of it. With his grace, yes. With his help, yes. With his creativity, yes. But when God says, hey, I'm gifting you with the gift of hospitality. I'm gifting you with the gift of public speaking. I'm gifting you with the gift of noticing details. It's up to me now to take care of that gift. And as Paul says, to fan that gift into flames. You know, I've told you all the story of my little violin. I haven't really stewarded this gift. Well, maybe it's a bit prideful to even claim that I'm gifted in the violin. Because if you'd heard me play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you might know it's not a gifting yet. But it's my responsibility to steward and to fan it into flames. Have you used this season to work on your giftings? Have you used this season? Are you using your here and now? You know, one of the things that the internet has done for our generation, it has eliminated us of excuses. It has, em it has eliminated excuses from us. We are a, a generation without excuse. You want to learn how to tie a necktie in some fancy Japanese style? YouTube. You want to learn how to whistle a brown weaver bird's whistle? YouTube. You want to learn how to play the piccolo? YouTube. You want to learn how to cook Chinese food? YouTube. You want vocal lessons? YouTube. You want piano lessons? YouTube. You want to watch great messages and grow your understanding of theology? YouTube. Like, honestly, you guys, we're not like, I still remember when I was very, very young in school, my, my parents had bought um, Encyclopedia Britannica. Do you guys remember? Does any of you out there remember encyclopedias? If you want to know about, about, uh, 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 wasps. You go to the Encyclopedia W, you look up wasps and whatever is written there, that's what you've got to work with. And if you're really like keenly passionate about learning about wasps, then you go to the library and you hope that that library has some sort of science book or book about wasps or something. Like that's what you had to do. Now, you want to know anything about anything about anyone, anywhere, from any time in history. You want to know what's going on in any culture, in any government. You want to know anything. You literally are two and a half seconds away if you have bundles, you're two and a half seconds away from downloading any information that you need. 
Are you stewarding your gifts? Are you growing your gifts? Am I growing my gifts? You know, uh, one of the things when I started um, producing music, I did have initially, I had some people who trained me and worked with me and helped me understand the uh, program that I use. It's called Logic. So I had the basics of Logic. But I found that as I went, there was such a gift in being able to say, hmm, um, this EQ isn't working. I don't know what to do. I'd literally just go look up a tutorial on the EQ uh, side chaining in Logic and I'd have all my answers right there. Now we have the capacity to grow at such an incredible rate compared to generations before us. And for you to focus on the here and now, I want to encourage you to stop making excuses for why you're not taking care of your giftings and fanning them into flame. Why, you're, why aren't you? What is, po what is the reason? And again, if you go back to, well, I don't have the time, then that's a case of values because what you value you will pursue. What you value, you will make time for. I remember sitting down when I was learning how to do logic, I would watch logic tutorials for eight hours straight in a day. I signed up for a $60 uh, course online that was like a five month course in logic to learn more and learn more because I value this. This is something I really want to be good at. And so I would invest time, I invested resource in it to be able to grow my giftings and grow my skills. And so I want to challenge you and encourage you to think about how are you stewarding the giftings God has given you? You know, one of the things that we make the mistake of doing is assuming that only creative giftings are giftings. If you're gifted, it means you can play the guitar or you can sing or you can dance or um, you can produce or, you know, those, we, we tend to make the creative, you're, you're an artist, you can paint something. Those tend to be the, the things that we we quickly think of when we talk about giftings. But do you know, God has so many giftings that he has given each and every one of us. You could be gifted in sports, gifted. Now, you might be sitting there saying, okay, yes, I'm gifted in sports, but I'm not gifted enough to go play professionally. But are you gifted enough to go play the guys in the neighborhood and be good enough to get their attention? And now that you have their attention and you th they think you're really cool because you're actually very great at soccer, now you have an open door to minister to them, to become friends with them, to start having an influence in their lives. Maybe you're really, really gifted at cooking. Maybe you're really, really gifted or somewhat gifted at What's something else you can be gifted at? Let me think. Babe? Hmm? Books. Is that what you said? Yeah. Maybe you're really gifted in school, in, 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 in studying. Maybe you're gifted with money. Maybe you're super, super gifted in, 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 in accounting. Y'all, don't start thinking, oh me, I'm not gifted because I can't sing and I, I can't dance. Those are not the only giftings God has. That scripture says, the gift that you received, fan that gift into flames. You want to focus on your here and now? Start fanning your gifting into a flame. Start fanning your gifting into something that God can use in every sphere of our, of our city and of our nation. Maybe you're gifted with children. Maybe you're a gifted teacher. Maybe you're gifted at doing, uh, being behind the scenes. You're gifted with administration. You're gifted with details. There is a purpose and a reason God's designed you with that gifting. Amen? Amen. Lastly, number three steward your family. Now, you might be thinking, I am very single as I'm watching this right now. I have no family to steward at the moment. I want to encourage you to start seeing your church as your family if you don't already. Let me read to us from Acts chapter 16, verse 32 uh, to 34. when I get it. Let me say that again. Let me read to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm going to start from verse 16. Actually, I'm going to start from verse 14. It says, as you know, the human body is not made up of only one part, but of many parts. Suppose a foot says, I'm not a hand, so I'm not part of the body. Would that mean that it's no longer a part of the body? Or suppose an ear says, I'm not an eye, so I'm not part of the body. 
would that mean it's no longer part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would it hear? If the whole body were an ear, how would it smell? So God has put each and every part of the body together as he wanted it. Somebody say, as he wanted it. How could it be a body if it only had one part? So there are many parts, but one body. From verse 21, and I can't say to a hand, I don't need you. Or again, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. The opposite is true. The parts of the body that we think are weaker are the ones that we really need. The parts of the body that we think are less honorable are the ones we give special honor. So our unpresentable parts are made more presentable. However, our presentable parts don't need this kind of treatment. God has put the body together and given special honor to the part that doesn't have it. God's purpose was that the body should not be divided. Let me say that again. God's purpose was that the body should not be divided, but rather that all of its parts should feel the same concern for each other. If one part of the body suffers, all the parts share its suffering. If one part is praised, all the others share in its happiness. Verse 27, you, Christ's body. If you're sitting next to somebody, turn to them and say, you are Christ's body. And if you're sitting by yourself, high five yourself and say, I am Christ's body. And each of you, each of you watching this right now is an individual part of it. In the church, God has appointed first apostles, next prophets, third teachers, and then those who perform miracles, then those who have the gift of healing, and then those who help others, and then those who are managers, and then those who can speak in a number of languages. Not all believers are apostles, are they? Are all of them prophets? Do all of them teach? Do all of them perform miracles or have gifts of healing? Can all of them speak in other languages or interpret languages? I love this portion of scripture. It's so, so important when we talk about stewarding the family. It says in verse 27, you are Christ's body. It doesn't say Pastor Brian is God's body and Bishop is God's body and this kid's leader over here is God's body and these people who work full time in ministry are the body. It says you are God's body. You have been individually created to fit into this body, to bring something into this body, to bring something that God gave you, that you have the time and you have the giftings and the skills to now come and present to the body of Christ and say, I might just be a hand, maybe not uh, the hair, but how can the hand say, I'm not needed? How can, imagine if the, the individual parts of your body right now started deciding, uh, me, I'm not needed here. Me, I have nothing to offer. Like, imagine the chaos that would happen if your body stopped working in order. That's what we call sickness. When one part of my body does not do what God designed it to do, that's called sickness. That's called that part needs assistance, it needs medicine, it needs help, it needs prayer. And what God designed the body of Christ for is, you come, you have a gift of hospitality. You come, you're great with details. You come, you just make everyone laugh. You, you come because you're such a nice singer. You, you come because you're great with children. You, you come because you understand the deep things of scripture. You come because you managed to score great deals on Yamachoma, and that's very important. Okay, this other one, you come because you're a heckler. This one, you come because you're good at laughing at people's jokes and hecklers need you. Oh yeah, now this one, you come because you're great with teenagers. You come because you're cool and we just need a cool factor in this group because Monday I'm looking around and uh, we need a cool factor. So you come be our cool factor. Uh, you come play the drums. Okay, you come mop the floor. Uh, you come do this part. This is what God is is your power and your gifting and your skill is in your individuality. It is not in, it is not, oh, I, like the, I can't sing. Oh, no, no, no. God said, I've made you a part of the body and your part is critical. I even love how it talks about here, how the unseen parts of the body are so important. You know, my church that I, 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 I serve in, one of the things that we talk about a lot in our creative team, we have our answers. We have our tech and media team. We have our sound team, our, our guys who run, you know, the boards. Uh, we have sign language guys. I'm sure I might be missing someone. That gives you the idea. And you know, it's easy to think the guys who are on stage, which is me, Sunday morning, I'm there. I'm singing. 
Well, I mean, now I'm, I'm at a shoot for Church at Home Online, but you, you get my point. On Sunday morning, as if we were having an in-person gathering, the singers come on stage, man, say, we look good, we've, we've put on makeup, our hair is nice, we've practiced our harmonies, the band is there, you got the cool guy playing the bass, and I'm just going to tell you all right now, the bass player in our church, man, he is hot. He is a hot bass player. And in case you're worried, he's my husband. And woo, I like leading the band. And every now and again, I'll turn to give him directions like, you know, but it's just because I want to check him out because he's so cute. Um, so the band's up there, the singers, up there, and then we have the dancers. And y'all, our dance is crazy good. So they're up there. Woo, they're doing their cool moves. It's like it's a life dream of mine one day to be on the dance team. One day I'm going to be there. And it would be so easy to look at the service and think, these guys are so important. But do you know what we teach our team? Everyone on my team knows this. The most important people on our team are the sound team, who you never see until there's a problem. When the mic rings, we all turn our withering gaze to the sound team. When we can't hear ourselves in our monitors, we turn to the sound team. In fact, the sound team knows when they've done their job really well, no one notices them. That's how they know they're doing a good job. Because the only time we turn to the sound team is when things go wrong. The point I'm making is this. If you look at your personal body, like your physical, actual body, how many say, if I had to do it, I could live without hair? I, if I had to do it, I could survive without eyebrows. You know, if, if, you were to, um, if you were to remove my, my nails, I could do it. Like, I might not look very good. I might not be very appealing or attractive, but I could survive. But how many of you, when you're considering your body, could say, if I had to, I could live without my lungs? Okay, if I really had to, I could do life without my heart, without my backbone. Now life is going to get very, very tricky. And I love that scripture honors those who serve in unseen ways. You can't see my kids, but I guarantee you if they were not working well, I would not be standing here right now. And it's so important for us to realize, yes, God has called some of us to be in visible places of service and ministry, but it's also to be very um, humble to know it's usually the unseen guys. You know, I'm looking right camera and behind this camera I'm talking to is a very lovely young lady I don't know her name I don't know who she is but I'm telling you that lady is very critical for this to happen right here and behind her there's a table of people I don't know any of them except joy hi joy and my husband hi husband but the rest of those people back there don't know their names no idea who they are never met them uh, I'm sure I'll go and meet them soon but my point is those people you know my name, you know Rebecca Dawn, you know me, but do you know who's editing this? Do you know who's going to spend hours putting their talent and their gift and their skill and their time in a technical thing that is making it possible for you to listen to me right now? They are what we might call the unseen parts of the body, but they're so critical and they're so important. And I want to encourage everyone listening tonight, listening at whatever time you're listening, I want to encourage you steward the family well. Don't start saying, well, me, I'm not called to serve. Oh, yes, you are. You're called to serve. You, think about your, your natural family, either your mom and dad and siblings, or if you're married, your husband, your wife, your children. How many of you would say, I'm not called to use my giftings and my skills in my family? I'm only called to use my gifting and skills at my job. None of us would say that. I am very, very talented as a cook. I, well, <laughs> that might sound prideful. I think I'm very, very talented as a cook. Can you imagine if I go home and tell my husband, hey, you're going to need to pay me for these skills that I have because, you know, I could open a restaurant. I'm that good at cooking and you get to eat this food every day. So you're going to need to pay me in order for me to bring my skill into this house and into this home and into this family. Of course, I wouldn't do that. Imagine the audacity of a child turning to the parent and saying, you know, you're going to need to pay me to wash dishes. You're going to need to pay me to clean my room. No, 
We all use what we have to make our homes beautiful, to make our homes wonderful, to make our homes enjoyable. And I pray that God is helping you, even as I'm speaking right now, think about ways in your spiritual family that you can come and focus on the here and now with your church, with your leaders, with your small group, with whatever you're connected to. How can I bring my gifting and my time and the current season that I in right now how can i use this season how can i use whatever time is at my disposal right now and whatever skills i have right now to come and make this place beautiful and wonderful and magnificent the same way i would give my natural family that um honor is is what i would do for my spiritual family if you're sitting there and feeling like I don't have anything to offer, yes, you do. God never wastes anything. And you, for certain, are not a waste of God's creation. He's put something in you. So start identifying. And if you're sitting there saying, I don't even know what I'm good at. I don't even know what I'm gifted at. You know, to focus on the here and now, my giftings, my skills. Here's a very easy question. What are you passionate about? Think about it. What are you passionate about? What gets you excited? You know, I've often said... The two ministries in church that, I mean, I'll do whatever God wants me to do, but the two ministries I pray, I don't end up on, is accounting and working with very small children. Because I just got to tell you, sitting down all day and crunching numbers does not light my soul on fire. Like I'm not sitting there seeing spreadsheets of amounts and feeling like, buddy, this is going to be a great day. But there are guys who do accounting, at least in our team, they are incredible. They are so passionate about this. They, it makes so much sense to them. You know, if, you, if there's a budget, you do not want to put Rebecca on charge of that budget because we'll have a lot of fun for sure. But then when it comes time to consolidate and, you know, uh, bring order, we're going to have some challenges. Somebody say hallelujah. Um, but I'm so grateful that in our body there are people who they're gifted and they're strong and they're capable and they're excellent in this. I'm so glad, you know, I'm thinking about this lady right now. She is the one who caters for our team. So every Sunday she's the one who makes us our tea and our mandazi or our hot dog or whatever we're having that day. She makes croissants, you guys, her croissants. I'm so grateful she's brought her gifting to the body of Christ. <laughs> I'm so grateful she uses what she's good at and, and the part of the body God's made her to be in our team because it makes such a difference. She's not standing there saying, well, I can't sing. And also, you know, the pastor did not come and recognize me when I made croissants. He did not come and say, these croissants were anointed with the presence of Jehovah and I just wanted to thank you. Like many times, she's an unseen part of the body, but what she does makes the body work together. And this scripture in Corinthians talks about when one part hurts, all the parts hurt. Have you guys ever gotten a hangnail? Think about a hangnail, that small thing on the side of your finger. It's so, so, so little. And any, all of your big, strong muscles and organs and, 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 and blood vessels and lungs, all day, you're just thinking about this tiny thing. Any, you're playing with it. You're kneading it all day as you go. You're, who has a nail cutter? You try and well, she can't get it. That tiny thing, that tiny thing has made a difference in your whole entire body. You know, you might be that tiny thing, if I could call you that. You might be that thing that when you're hurting, we all hurt. Any of the big, strong muscles are hurting because of this small thing and focused on this small thing. So I want to encourage you, don't sit back and say, oh, I don't have anything to offer. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, you know, n in my next season, I'm really going to get involved in my small group. In my next season, I'm going to volunteer. In my next season, I'm going to serve. Your next season is going to be busier than this season. Your next season is going to have more on your plate than this season. See, you want God to answer your prayer, Sindio. And you've asked God for big things, Sindio. Which means when God, when, when God gives you those things, you're going to be even busier. You know, you're like, ah, when I finish campus. You know what happens after campus? Work. Okay, so, so you know when I become the boss. You know what happens after that? Marriage. Okay, so let me just spend a year. I get to know this mama I've married. You know what happens after that? Children. You know what happens after the first child? Another one. And then another one. And then four. And then after that, just hear from God on how many more should come after that. Every season gets busy. So it's not saying, oh God, then is when I'll serve you. No, God, right here. Now I have one hour a week that I can give. I have one hour a week that I can help, that I can serve. You know, one of the things I love is wake up every morning and tell the Lord, 
Say, God, I want to make you happy today and spend the rest of the day doing just that. Ask him, God, how can I make you happy today? How can I serve you today? And then spend the rest of the day answering that question. Whatever he puts on your heart. I want to encourage you, every man, every woman listening to me right now. God has something for you in your here and now. Don't write off 2020. Don't give in to the lie that says, ah, this year is already a lost cause. No, it isn't. God needs a day to open a Red Sea. God needs a moment to shut lions' mouths. God has proven time and time and time again that wilderness and fires and waits and seasons that we all look at and think, ooh, that's bad. Those are places that he shines. Those are places that he does miracles. So don't start saying, oh, I've already finished 2020. Let me look at 2021. There are still how many 24-hour segments left in this year? And I'm not just saying left for God to do something for you. I'm saying there's time left for you to do something for God. God. Don't think that this year is a write-off. It's not. God is just as much in control right now as he was last year and he will be a year from now. God is in control. Focus on the here and now. What is God having you do right now? How are you stewarding your time? How are you stewarding your giftings? How are you stewarding your family? Let me pray for you. Father, I just want to pray right now for each person who's listening. Lord, there are so many things, so many opportunities that when we look back over our lives, I think we might be so convicted that we let pass us by with excuses. Father, there was a story in the Bible that talks about how when someone was invited to a banquet, they said, oh, I can't. I've just bought a field. And another said, oh, I can't. I've just gotten married. And another one said, I can't. I have oxen. Father, their riches, their relationships, and their responsibilities all became their reasons they would not respond. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we would not be so quick to give reasons why we're not responding here and now. Your presence is here. You are the great I am. That is your name. You did not identify yourself as I was or I will be. You said I am. I am in this moment. I am in this season. I am with you right now. I am I'm speaking right now. I'm moving right now. And Father, I pray that you would help us be men and women who recognize the times and seasons. Let us not be planting when we should be harvesting. Let us not be resting when we should be working. Father, let us not be misusing the season that we're in. Lord, help us to remember that our next is dependent on our now, that our then is dependent on our here. So Father, help us steward well the time that we have right now, the giftings and the abilities that we have right now. Father, and the family that we have. Lord, let us not keep postponing. Let us not be like the those who pass by the man who was beaten up by the thieves and say, oh, I would stop, but I have something I'm going to and pass by such an incredible opportunity. Lord, help us look around our neighborhoods, our families, our friends circles. Help us look around our workplaces, God, our colleges. Help us look around, Lord, those who are around us. Where can we serve you? Where can we be a blessing? Sing. Father, let us look in our church. Let us pick up the phone, call our pastor, call our leader and say, hey, how can I help? What can I do? Here's a block of time I might have on a Saturday or on a Monday evening. Is there anything I could be doing? Lord, if nothing else, help us steward prayer. Help us pray for one another. Pray for our family, our physical family, our biological family, our spiritual family, Father God. And I thank you for it. Lord, those who might be listening who are discouraged in their here and now who are discouraged in this season, who are carrying heavy weights and facing serious distractions right now, I pray for focus. Focus, Father God, focus. Lord, looking in on what you're doing now, your word says today if you hear my voice, today if you hear my voice. Father, while it is still today, what would you have us do? And I pray for encouragement over those who are discouraged. I pray for strengthening over those who might feel weak. I pray, Father God, for those who might be so discouraged distracted with the glorious by and by that we're not even seeing what's right in front of us that we could be doing. We're not stewarding our time. We're not stewarding our skills. We're not stewarding our families well. Father, help us to realign today. Fill us with fresh strength and fresh energy. Fill us with joy that is our strength. And I thank you, God, that as we take care of today, Lord, that all the harvests of our tomorrows are found in the seeds of our todays. So let us plant well today. Let us care well for today and our tomorrows will fall into place. Bless each man. Bless each woman. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
God bless you all.